residents of the town of Waitley assembled for the annual town meeting. Please be in order. If you can hear me and understand me, raise your hand. Excellent, thank you. All right, um, I'm Nat Fortune, your new town moderator. Thank you for being here today under very extraordinary circumstances to do the most extraordinary of things, which is to constitute our own legislature and to pass the budgets and bylaws we need to govern our town. We're gonna have three items of business before we proceed to the first article on the warrant. The first of these will be a thanks for our outgoing town moderator. The second will be a brief address by our local state rep. And the third will be a dedication of the town report. So let me start with the town moderator. Uh, I'm as surprised as perhaps many of you that it's not Richard Smith standing up here at this podium. But he, after many years of service to the town, has decided to retire. Uh, those of you who come more infrequently or only because you thought this was a picnic uh, may be surprised Paul Florial isn't standing up here. And right now uh, in the sun I'm thinking either one of those would be a great nominee. However, uh, in the 26 years that my family has been uh, privileged and had the benefit of living in Waitley, I've only known those two gentlemen as town moderator and I think we can both thank both, we can thank both of them for their dedication to their task and their outgoingness and their service to the town. And I'd just like to have us all give a round of applause for the two of them. Uh, um, Richard Smith passed on three gifts to me. The first was a note that there's a vacancy on the finance committee that needs filling. And so if you are interested in helping serve the town in that way, Please consult with Paul and Tay, our chairs, what the duties and responsibilities are, which are many, and the reward and pay, which is nothing. Uh, but, uh, and then uh, consult with me about if you would like to apply for the position. Um, secondly, he gave me this fine gavel here with only one small crack in it. Uh, we'll try not to break it apart. And the third is a highly up to date book of uh, town meeting history and parliamentary law published just the year that I turned one. Uh, and so reading the history of Waitley I discovered that in town meetings that it used to be customary to open town meeting with a earnest moral instruction lecture of at least an hour of duration to put everyone into the proper frame of mind by whoever the local elected official might be who could be called upon for that task. I'd like to reopen that transition. And we invite uh, Representative Natalie Blay to speak, uh, although instead of a duration of not more than two hours, perhaps we could say not more than two minutes. One minute, excellent. Uh, please welcome Representative May. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I appreciate you giving me one minute of time tonight. I'll make this quick. I know everybody wants to get home. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you to your incredible select board who always goes above and beyond every single day, but in recent months has really stepped up to the plate to protect our health and safety. And so I want to give you all a great deal of thanks for everything that you do every day. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to Brian, Lynn, and Nat for making tonight's historic annual town meeting happen. This was not easy, believe me, and I just want to give you all thanks for making this happen tonight. Thank you. And then finally, I just wanted to let you know that despite us being in a pandemic, I'm still here working for you. I'm in Sunderland, not in Boston. Um, but I wanted you to know that you can call at any time if you need assistance. Whether it's a question or feedback about the reopening plan, if you need help with food or housing assistance, if you're having a problem with unemployment insurance, I want you to know you can reach out to my office. 
my phone number and I keep this phone with me at all times so you can call anytime if my voicemail picks up it's because I'm on another phone or on another floor of my house or I just don't have a signal but leave a message and I'll call you back that number is 413-362-9453 and that's 413-362-9453 or you can email me at natalie.blay at mahouse.gov so with that I think I was close to a minute, maybe a little over, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you all for being here tonight. I know it's hot, but you being here showing, it shows the importance of our annual town meetings to our communities and the lengths that we're going to participate in our democracy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that one minute and 42 second speech. <laughs> all right. Uh, we now turn to the dedication of the town report, and that will be given by uh, Joyce Palmer Fortune. Hi, everyone. I'm going to keep this really, really brief because you've got the town report, and you can see in one page all the reasons why I think this year we're trying to acknowledge and uh, maybe give a pat on the back to to Fran Fortino. Um, initially, I thought of it for his work on the Board of, on the, uh, the Solid Waste Management Committee and the President of Valley Neighbors. But in the last few months, I've really, really appreciated his help as the Chair of the Board of Health. And I really mean it, the very last line, times like these, leadership counts. So can we give uh, Fran uh, some recognition and a round of applause. Please proceed. moderator recognizes Judy Markham. Before we turn to the regular warrant, I think the whole, all the town employees should be recognized for their huge service during this very difficult time. And this should be recorded by the town and we should give them a huge round of applause for all their work. Thank you very, mu very much. Um, and it is an extraordinary event, so a few housekeeping things. In the event of rain, uh, I will call a 30-minute recess. At that point, you should not retire to the school. You should not go to the school. You should return to your cars and then come back in 30 minutes. Uh, in the event of a plague of mosquitoes, I'll entertain a motion to keep discussion on each item to one minute. And in the event of a global pandemic, uh, we'll just keep calm and carry on as we're doing. All right, thank you. Uh, let's now proceed to the uh, first item on the warrant. Uh, do I have a motion to put it forward? Sure. I move that the town vote to accept the annual reports of the officers. I'm going to push. It's on? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the annual reports of the officers of the town and to hear any other reports of the boards and committees. Second. A motion is on the floor and it's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Moderator, I move the town. I know, I don't, okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of the revenue of the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2020, in accordance with the provisions of General Law, Chapter 44, Section 4, and to renew any note or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with the provisions of Je uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 17. Article 2 has been motioned, moved, and seconded. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to enter into contracts for goods and services with a duration in excess of three years, pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 30B, Section 12B. 
Article 3 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your card. All opposed? Thank you. The article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to enter into compensating balance agreements with banking institutions having their principal offices in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts during the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2020 as permitted by General Law Chapter 44, Section 53F. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your card. Opposed? Article 5 carries. Four nope. carries. Four. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to apply for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or private grant monies on behalf of the town and to authorize the town treasurer with approval of the select board to borrow in anticipation of reimbursement. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion for Article 6? I mean, Article 5? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? The motion carries. Right. These first articles are what we do as a legislature to authorize our elected representatives to spend and appropriate money on our behalf and to execute the bylaws that we pass. And the next articles are dealing with the spending and appropriation of money. Uh, starting with Article 6. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to establish spending limits for the town's revolving funds as established by the town's general bylaws, Chapter 46 revolving funds for the fiscal year be beginning on July 1st, 2020, as follows. I will not read the spending limits. You have them all on the second page of your warrant articles. Article 6 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion regarding the revolving funds? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your card. All opposed? Article 6 carries. Read Article 7, please. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to fix the salaries or compensation of the elected officials of the town for the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2020, as follows. And you can see they go from moderator, select board, town clerk, assessor, water commissioners, school committee, elector Oliver Smith, will, board of health, constables, cemetery commissioners, and opening graves fee. Uh, the motion has been moved and second. Is there any discussion on, or, on this Article 7? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? The article passes. Later, I move the town vote to appropriate $395,679 or any other sum or sums of money from the Water Department Enterprise Fund to finance the operation of the Water Department for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2020, um, and I am certainly not going to read these columns in rows. The article has been moved and seconded. Is there any questions or discussion? Uh, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor, raise your card. All opposed? The article carries. Now the next motion is on the town operating, articles on the town operating budget. And I've asked the chair of the finance committee to walk us through those parts of the budget, please. So please welcome Paul and Thea. All right. Well, I still have my training wheels on. I've been kindly reminded, properly so, that someone should actually read this article first. Yeah, Paul was supposed to read so it. So, Paul, please go ahead. You want me to? Jim's going to read it. Go ahead, Jim. Not yet. I am. Good. Can you hear me now? All right. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town act on the report of the Finance Committee on the fiscal year 2021 town operating budget and to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds money for the operation of the town's departments, boards, committees, agencies, and officers 
for the payment of debt service and for all other necessary and proper expenses for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020 as follows. Note, the Water Department Enterprise Fund costs are appropriated in Article 8. Proposed fiscal year 2021 budget, the Finance Committee recommends that the amounts shown in the column captioned fiscal year 2021 operating budget be raised or appropriated or transferred from available funds for fiscal year 2021 operating purposes, debt services, and other town expenses. And you can see the detail below. All right, now that the article has been moved in second, I would like to invite Paul Antea to walk I us through the budget itself. Okay. No? No. Hey, Matt, Matt, let me... Yes, why don't you do? I yield the microphone. Okay. Um, I'm Paul Antea, chairperson of the Finance Committee, and prior to getting into these, into the department budgets, um, I just want to say that the Finance Committee, as well as the Select Board, worked these past months, and one goal was to try to level fund this budget. Um, in this environment, with people out of work, um, the last thing you want to get is an increase in taxes. Now, not to, th not to say that this is going to uh, translate into um, a decrease in taxes. We, we have to wait to see what the state will do. But we have control of the operating budget, and the budget is still over $5 million. It, it's a relatively large number. So we thought we would go through each of the departments and find out if there are any questions. So first, you have the departments in front of you. General government. We have a decrease of $1,251. We have $416,968. Any questions, any thoughts, any comments? Next, cultural recreation services, 132,207 for an increase of 3.74 percent. Any questions, comments, thoughts? One here. Summer, due to all that's going on, uh, does does that alter uh, the budget, or has that already been taken into account? That has already been taken into account. Uh, their budget was reduced. It was not eliminated because, as we found out, they still need funds to do some work that they had planned for that site. Thank you very much. All right, the next page, public health, $87,704 for an increase of 16.27%. Questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. Public safety, 389,110. The decrease of $3,280. Questions? Good. Next, public works, $398,482. Increase of 15281 Any questions on the public works? Insurance and benefits, 760243, decrease of $24,568. Questions on insurance and benefits? None. Unclassifieds, with $70,981, for an increase of $1,295. Any questions on the unclassified category? Next, we go to Waitley Elementary School. Well, schools in general. But I have to say that what allowed us to have level funding is that Frontier and Waitley Elementary stepped up and pulled back a significant amount of their budget. And without their help, 
I don't know if we would be able to meet that level funding goal that we had. So we want to thank them um, for doing that. Um, Whaley Elementary, 1,785,184,000. One, $1, Any questions on Whaley Elementary School? Question here. Yes, I appreciate the uh, effort on level funding. Can you provide some information or assurance that uh, there haven't been layoffs or other adverse impacts on our school employees that would affect quality of education? One advantage I have is knowing every town department head. And I believe I saw the Waitley Elementary principal. And there she is right there. Would you like to comment on that? Hold on. At this time, there have been no layoffs. No layoffs up to this point. Pro programming? Programming has remained the same. Remained the same. Okay. Frontier Regional, $980,824 for an increase of $16,444. Any questions, thoughts, comments, Frontier? Fine. Franklin County Technical School, $229,542 for an increase of $55,078, meaning a 31.57% increase. Part of that is due to we have more children, more students attending that school, and the other part of it is that they refuse to back off on the budget. So both of those combined, you have that number. Uh, let's vote no longer there. Okay, long-term debt. Um, here we have finally, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Paul. Any more general discussion? Uh, a comment here on a, on a budget. Uh, how we got here, it was uh, based on, on a lot of, lot of meetings between the select board and finance committee, we had a, a budget early in the year before the pandemic started that I think was, was an increase in the town budget, an increase in tax dollars, in the tax rate, and the two committees got together and said, we, we can't present that kind of a budget to our town people in this kind of environment that we're in today. With everybody uh, laying off, uh, having financial issues, the pandemic and all. We got to get together. We got together several meetings, the two boards, and we looked seriously at what we could what we could cut or not increase really. There was other things we could have added to this budget if we wanted, but it came down to the decision to at this time that we don't need them other activities that they can be postponed or delayed. Some of that we will pick up in future years. And and that's why we got to this budget and how we felt that with the with the the small increase that this was a reasonable budget not knowing what our revenues were going to be for this year thank you any further discussion all right the motion on the floor or the ground as it were uh, for this article is to move a total town operating budget for 20 fiscal year 2021 of $5,251,245. All in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? The article passes. Mr. Yeah. Moderator? I move the town vote to authorize the Board of Assessors to transfer the sum of $200,000 from available funds of fiscal year 19 free cash to reduce the tax levy for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2020. Article 10 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article passes. Mr. Moderator, 
I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $100,000 from available funds fiscal year 19 free cash to the general stabilization fund. The article has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to just mention that a lot of these articles are discussed with additional explanation, and, and you should have picked up a, a booklet annual on an annual town meeting that was part on the table that explains what the increases are for, for a majority of these items. Uh, that may answer most of your questions. So. If you want to know further, well, you can please ask questions, but pick up the booklet as you leave if you want to know. Our town administrator did an excellent job of providing additional information, so we don't have to worry about answering many of these questions during the meeting. A lot of it's in this booklet. Are there any questions you would like to put forward with your sovereign right as legislators at this moment? Seeing none. We move Article 11 to a vote. All in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? The article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum, transfer and return the sum of $50,000 appropri appropriated under Article 3 of the March 25, 2020 Special Town Meeting back to the Capital Stabilization Fund. Article 12 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The article passes. No, the next ones are capital equipment appropriations, and uh, we will take those up now. If you have questions about those, uh, please, please feel free to ask. Okay, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $21,500 from available funds, fiscal year 19 free cash, to pay for the purchase of new communications equipment for the police and fire departments. Article 13 has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Seeing none, please raise your card. All in, we'll move to a vote. If it, all in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? The article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $8,000 from available funds, fiscal year 19, free cash, to pay for the repairs to the Whateley Elementary School roof. Second. Article 14 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? In the back, please. Am I remembering correctly that we've repaired the roof previously? The uh, question is about when the most recent time for roof repair was. Is there a member of the school administration or committee who can address that question? Do you have to invite me to speak? Uh, yes. I exercise the moderator's privilege to invite a non-resident to speak. Darius Modesto, Superintendent of Schools. Basically the issue, that I don't know the exact date the uh, roof was fixed on this building, but the issue is those two skylights right there, they're leaking. And so the idea is to, re, uh, to take them out and redo that area. So that's, that's where the $8,000 is going. Thank you, Superintendent. Any further questions or discussion? So the article will move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 14 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $12,500 from available funds, fiscal year 19 free cash, to pay for the expansion and resurfacing of the driveway and parking lot at the S. White Dickinson Library. <clears throat> Article 15 has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? All in favor then? Please raise your card. All opposed? All right, I count all the cards in one eagle. Mm. Article 15 passes. Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $13,750 from available funds, fiscal year 19 free cash, to pay for the purchase of new five-inch fire hose 
to be used by the fire department. Article 16 has been moved and second. We proceed to discussion. Is that a hand up back there? No, okay, just the sign. Okay, uh, seeing no questions, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 16 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $80,810 from available funds, fiscal year 19 free cash, to pay for the debt service on the fire truck loan. Second. Article 17 is moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Seeing none, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate and transfer the sum of $5,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund retained earnings to pay for upgrades to the Westbrook, Westbrook Road Pumping Station. Article 18 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Article 18 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate and transfer the sum of $25,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund retained earnings to pay for the engineering and installation of booster pumps at the main pump house on Chestnut Plain Road. Article 19 is removed and seconded. We move to discussion. Are there any questions? All right. All, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 19 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Highway Department to enter into a lease purchase financing agreement for an excavator for the term of years up to the useful life of the equipment to be procured as determined by the Select Board. Uh, the article has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? The article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Highway Department to enter into a lease purchase financing agreement for a wood chipper for a term of years up to the useful life of the equipment to be procured as determined by the Select Board. Article 21 has been moved and seconded. We we'll move to discussion. Any questions? All right, let's, you're all flagging out there. But, you know, we've gotten through uh, 21 articles in 30 minutes, so you're doing well. All right, uh, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $12,000 from available funds fiscal year 19 free cash to pay for the first year payment on the lease purchase agreement of the wood for the wood chipper. The article 22 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 22 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate and transfer the sum of $5,499.90 from available funds, fiscal year 19, free cash, to be transferred to the Frontier Regional School District for capital needs, including purchasing and installing electric corridor holds, repairing the central clock system, and repairing the exterior and interior intercom system as part of a total $48,500 expense. Second. Uh, the article 23 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? We'll move to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Article 23 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town hear and act pursuant to general law chapter 44b on the report of the community preservation committee for the fiscal year 2021 community pre preservation budget 
and vote to appropriate or reserve from the Community Preservation Fund a sum of money in the amounts recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for committee administrative expenses, community preservation projects, and other necessary and proper expenses in the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2020, including debt service for any approved community preservation project, which each item to be considered, with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Quite the long run-on sentence. Um, appropriations in the sum of $7,750 from estimated revenues for open space reserve, $15,500. Estimated revenues for affordable housing reserve, $15,500. Estimated revenues for budgeted reserve, $73,250. And estimated revenues for town hall loan debt service, $43,000. All right, the article has been moved and seconded and will proceed to discussion. Uh, please note, if you had an original copy of the warrant, there was a typo that stated FY20. Your current version should read and properly FY21. Any questions or discussion on this item? Then we'll move to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $13,200 from the Community Preservation Fund unreserved fund balance for the restoration of gravestones in the town's historic cemeteries. Article 25 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Article 25 carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $60,000 as follows. $27,000 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserve and $33,000 from the Community Preservation Fund unreserved fund balance for the purchase of a conservation restriction on and in land located off Chestnut Plain Road, parentheses Whateley, Center Woods, Assessor's Parcel ID 12-0-09, containing approximately 120 acres of land and recreational trails. The article. 26 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Sir. My name is Scott Jackson and I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission in Waitley and I just want to speak briefly in favor of this warrant article. This is the first time that the Conservation Commission has proposed a project for CPA funding since the funding we came available and we're very happy to endorse the purchase uh, of this allocation towards a purchase of 120 acres in the center of Waitley. It abuts another property that's known as the Casey property or the Kennedy farm that is another 180 or so acres that was protected by a conservation restriction. So it creates a large block of protected land but it's also land that's been used quite a bit by Waitley residents for recreation, hunting, uh, hiking, cross-country skiing, and snowmobiling. And this property that's come, come up for sale is now uh, within our reach to protect it and to guarantee the access for those recreational activities into the future. And in addition, we'll provide a parking area and access, public access for people from other parts of town so that they have a way to get to this property and to be able to walk on the land. It's gotten broad support by commissions and committees from the town, as well as support from the Snowmobile Club, which actually went to the uh, Snowmobile Association of Massachusetts and requested funding for this project and are able to bring $3,150 to this project. And so I ask for your support. Thank you, Scott. Any further discussion on this article? I very much support open space preservation. Could somebody help me understand how the recreational trails will be maintained and will there be future costs 
it's uh, we're, we're basically where will the funding come from for maintenance of trails for public access? The question pertains to maintenance of the trails and the funding required, and the moderator recognizes Scott Jackson of the Conservation Commission. The, the proposal is, is that the Kestrel Land Trust will own the property and the town will hold the conservation restriction. Specifically, the Conservation Commission will hold the conservation restriction. Kestrel has uh, committed to maintaining the trails, the parking area, the kiosk, uh, and they have a stewardship fund that they use to ensure that they have the resources to do that in perpetuity. Thank you. Excellent questions. Any uh, further questions or discussion? And we'll move the article to a vote. All those in favor in Article 26, please raise your card. All those opposed? The article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to general law, Chapter 44B, to appropriate and transfer the sum of $10,000 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserves for updating the town's open space and recreation plan. The article 27 has been moved, seconded, and third. Let's open for discussion. Seeing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? Article 27 carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $11,000 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserves for the purchase of an agricultural preservation restriction on 33 acres of farmland located at 163 Long Plain Road, Assessor's Parcel ID 13-0-10, and owned by Lawrence and Nancy Ashman. Article 28 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 28 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $10,750 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserves for the purchase of an agricultural preservation restriction on 20 acres of farm land located at 239 River Road, Sessor's Parcel ID 27-0-15 and 27-0-15-1 and owned by Fran Sobieski. All right, this apparently is a particularly alarming article. <laughs> so I anticipate discussion. Uh, the article's been moved and second. Are there any questions? If not, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? All right, I count all cards present plus one car. Mr. All right, we move from budgetary items to mm -hmm. personal items requiring the state approval. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation to allow William Smith, a town of Waitley firefighter, notwithstanding the provisions of any general or special law to the contrary, to serve in such position until the age of 70 or until the date of his retirement or not appointment, whichever occurs first provided that no deductions from the regular compensation of said William Smith shall be made under General Law Chapter 32 subsequent to his reaching the age of 65 in connection with his service to the town for retirement or pension purposes and further provided that the general court may take may make clerical and editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the select board approves the amendments to the bill prior to enactment by the general court and to authorize the select board to approve such amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition. Another long run-on sentence. All right, Article 30 has been moved and seconded. We move to discussion. Are there any questions regarding Article 30? If not, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? article passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation to allow Gary Stone, a town of Waitley firefighter, 
notwithstanding the provision of any general or special law to the contrary, to serve in such position until the age of 70, or until the date of his retirement or non-appointment, whichever occurs first, provided that no deductions from the regular compensation of said Gary Stone shall be made under General Law Chapter 32, subsequent to his reaching the age of 65 in connection with his service to the town for retirement or pension purposes, and further provided that the general court may make clerical and editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the select board approves amendments to the bill prior to enactment by the general court and to authorize the select board to approve such amendments which bill sorry which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition thank you all right, Article 31 has been moved and seconded. We move to discussion. Any questions? Seeing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Article 31 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation authorizing a transfer to the town of the assets and operations of the Whateley Water District, including provisions for the district's disposition of certain real estate to other persons or entities, reimbursement to the district's members of costs related to physical connection of properties within the district to the town of Whateley Water System, the winding down of the district's affairs and such other matters as may be required by law or regulation to accomplish such to accomplish such transfer and to authorize the select board to prepare a petition including such provisions and such other provisions as it deems to be prudent or otherwise in the town's interest. Second. Right, Article 32 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, we move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 32 passes. And let me say we've passed 32 articles in 50 minutes, which uh, puts us on par the same time per article as uh, Representative Blay had for her speech of one minute and uh, uh, 45 seconds. Well done. <coughs> All right. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the town's general bylaws by adding a new chapter, 148-3, Wheatley Scenic Roads Bylaw, as follows. Um, I will lead it, leave it to the moderator if he wants me to read this whole page, and I would encourage him to let the townspeople read at their own volition. The moderator exercises the discretion of the townspeople to read the article on your own in full and ask any questions uh, regarding it. Is there a second? It has been moved and second. We move to a discussion regarding Article 33. The Waitley Scenic Roads Bylaw. I'll give you a minute to scan the items there. Enjoy the breeze from the trees. If, if people would like it read, I'm more than happy to. I just wanted to spare you the pain. All right. Uh, now that you've had a moment of quiet contemplation, uh, is there any further discussion or questions? Do roads designated as scenic roads, how does this impact maintenance of the roads themselves? I see there are a lot here about trees and walls and things along the road, but what about at least maintaining the passability of the roads once they're designated as scenic roads? The question regards how a designation of scenic road affects its uh, maintenance. I don't believe it impacts the maintenance of the road at all. Um, someone correct me if I'm Woefully blah. Is there anyone from the highway department who could speak to that? Yeah, Keith. This only pertains to the maintenance of trees. Um, the way the law was written, and the, the state adopted a law technically 
for me to go and trim a branch anything over two inches in diameter if it's a dead branch it needs to have a, a public hearing for that kind of work so this is just a little bit of housekeeping to to make it easier and more legal I guess to be able to maintain the trees it has no impact on the, the maintenance of the condition of the, like the road there's a second question over here the moderator re recognizes person in the back could somebody give us a distance from the middle of the road on either side what what are area are we talking about Keith, are you able to answer that question? In, that, in our town, all of our roads have, some of them are different width. On the average, I would say they're all in the, around 50 feet wide, but that doesn't mean that each road has a 50 foot layout. So if you can picture having a 50 foot wide strip of land that is the town layout for their road, the road can be anywhere within that. So you can't just say it's 25 feet out to the center line because the road on corners may be hugging the the inside corner so to speak so that's the best i can tell you at this point in time that when you look at your survey of your land where your bounds are shows where your property comes out and meets the town layout Does that address the question okay it seems that another question up front Just want to know how the town gets the designation of certain roads and how other roads may qualify for this designation scenic. Is there anyone from the Historical Commission or the Planning Board can speak to the process of designating a road a scenic road? Hi, I'm Donna Wiley from the Historical Commission. I'm, first of all, um, before I answer the question, I think it might be helpful to explain to people that the town actually designated these four roads as scenic roads in 1973. I was in college in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Some Lynn was probably in high school. Um, so they were designated as scenic roads in 1973 and the town reaffirmed their designation in 2010. But we never made our own bylaw as Keith says, to make the responsibilities that the state lays out for scenic roads manageable. And when we, the Historical Commission, started working with, Kate, uh, with Keith and realized it was just being incredibly onerous for him to do basic tree maintenance, there aren't really stone walls which are also pertinent to the scenic roads on these four roads, we, we worked and looked at some other town's bylaws and came up with this. Um, so that's the history of what we just, the whole, this is in order to make an existing town bylaw more manageable and actually less expensive. Um, Fran, to answer your question, um, it's the uh, responsibility of the Historical Commission to propose that certain roads be designated as scenic roads, and nobody wants to hear from me now a long explanation of what that means. But we have started talking about that a bit. And we actually interrupted it when we started working with Keith and thought that we ought to first make the management system we have workable before we investigated the possibility of naming other roads. All right, thank you both for the questions and the clarifications on this article and, and the previous ones. Uh, are there any other open questions? Sir? Do these restrictions just apply to the highway department or do they apply to us residents living on that road if we decide we want to update our property? The question, the answer to the highway department. It affects not only the town, but the residents, especially like if you need to remove Stonewall, it's, it's been designated a scenic road. So you have to maintain, be, you have to follow the guidelines of, of the state law. 
Any further discussion? If not, I'd like to proceed to a vote. All those in favor of the Article 33, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the town's zoning bylaws, section 171-28.4, Aquifer Protection District, as follows. And it's fairly short, but uh, there's only one change, and it adds the phrase at the end uh, that it would uh, prohibit storage of manure unless such storage is within a structure designated to prevent the generation and escape of contaminated runoff and leachate. Article 34 has been moved and seconded. We move to discussion. Any questions regarding Article 34? All right, we really know our leachate then. Uh, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Mr. Moderator, I'm 34 passes. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the town's zoning bylaws by amending section chapter 171-8 table of use regulations as follows. Proposed additions shown in the italics underlined and highlighted proposed deletions shown in the strikeout. Uh, the difference is, I guess, how we measure kilowatt hours is kilowatt AC designation. Uh, I think that may be the, the major change. All right. Is there a second? second. Article 35 has been Article 35 has been moved and seconded. We open to discussion. Any questions? This confused me a little bit, the units of kilowatt hours. As somebody with home solar, I would think we'd be talking about not kilowatt hours, but megawatts. So can somebody just, maybe I'm just confused about the units here. I can take that one. Um, it's actually not kilowatt hours, it's kilowatts. Okay, and um, uh, whether you specify AC or DC is the more important thing. If someone had a facility that was megawatts, then it'd be a thousand kilowatts. Um, it's generally written in the law in kilowatts. Um, and if it's a megawatt, then you, you say it's a thousand of them, that's all. Just to, to clarify, we're talking about Article 35. Other questions of a municipal or a uh, physical nature? Okay. Uh, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Article 35 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the town zoning bylaws, section 171-28.5, solar electricity generating facilities as follows. And I will read the, the purpose without going into the finer detail. The purpose of this bylaw is to facilitate the creation of new large-scale ground-mounted solar electric installations, see section 171-37, by providing standards for the placement, design, construction, operation, monitoring, modification, and removal of such installations that address public safety, minimize impacts on environmental, scenic, natural, and historic resources, and to provide adequate financial assurance for the eventual de decommissioning of such installations. Okay, article 36 has been moved and second. It's a very long article. I'm wondering if there's a member of the planning board who would like to introduce the topic of this article or if we'd rather move to uh, directly to general questions. Moderator recognizes Judy Martin. Is it on? Yes. I'm Judy Markland and I am a member of the planning board. And you should have a handout, hopefully, that says zoning bylaw revisions that gives a set of bullet points about what this is trying to accomplish. And it also has an amendment at the bottom. I can, I can read the bullet points. Um, the changes are designed to provide safety standards and siting restrictions for battery storage equipment in these facilities create a cap on the size of solar facilities 
with exceptions for those located on poor soil and out of sight of residences. Require remediation for taking productive farmland and forest out of production. Provide the ability to inspect the facility during and after construction. Strengthen plant screening and plant maintenance requirements. Identify new equipment required to support the power generated that will be located outside the site itself. Identify prime farmland, large trees, scenic roads, and scenic views. And as you've just seen, clarify whether kilowatt size factors reference AC or DC. And I should say, to do these, we had a series of meetings with the public and I think three public hearing sessions. We had the advice of Peggy Sloan from FERCOG, who is the head of planning, and we studied an awful lot of other people's bylaws. What we're trying to do, and planning and zoning is tough. Zoning is all about balancing property rights and in this case, a need for alternative energy as against the butter's rights and protection for farmland and aquifers and the like. And we've done our best to try and achieve a balance for that. I suspect, as politicians will tell you, when you come up with a balance, nobody's gonna be 100% happy, but we think our, we've done our best. And unfortunately, None of us on the planning board are physicists. And we have several in town who pointed out that um, on page 21 of the warrant, and uh, it's section 8.6, that we weren't very clear about capacity of storage versus generating facility. So I would like to propose a friendly amendment that reads, battery storage units shall be limited to only those needed to support the solar installation at the site. Their total maximum power output may not exceed the nominal rated kilowatt generating capacity of the installation as measured in direct current. And the storage capacity should not be larger than that required to provide electricity at that maximum power output for a period of four hours. Spent or expired battery units must be immediately removed from the site. As a friendly amendment, it requires no second. And we would move to a discussion of the amendment, a vote on the amendment, and then a discussion and a vote on the article as a whole. So are, is, is there, are there further questions regarding the amendment which has been proposed? In the back, so the side of it. Hi. Uh, Judy, do you know the size of some of these battery capacity units? Because some of them are very large, if we're talking the size of a large scale facility. I, I know that physically they are the size of a tractor trailer truck body. Um, and they would have many, many battery units within them. Um, they tend to be, um, they're lithium iron, not lithium iron. We've done our best to require a huge amount of safety, containment, um, run up, runaway, facilities, I mean, you, you would know the technology better than I. Um, frequent inspection, approval by the fire chief, annual training by the solar company of the fire department with the consent of the fire chief and the approval. Um, there's, I, I think you can see that in the bylaw. Fire is a problem. Um, the fire chief must sign off. It, it is supposed to be as tight as can be. We're requiring frequent inspections to maintain integrity of the facility. All right, 
are there additional questions regarding this amendment which sets uh, uh, specifies what the capacity and the power output of the batteries can be uh, seeing none we can move to a vote on the amendment all in favor of the amendment establishing limits on the size of the batteries raise your card all opposed to the amendment the amendment passes and now becomes part of the main motion. So the motion now as amended is up for discussion. Are there any further questions uh, regarding this article? Yes. Uh, Mike goes to the man with the frequent questioner award. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm not only a citizen of the town, but I'm the chair of the local chapter, the Berkshire chapter of the Appalachian Mountain Club, and we're very interested in these kinds of bylaws. So, And in particular, we, of course, support renewable energy, and this looks like a very good uh, by set of bylaws and zoning rules. My question, I think, is directed towards this resource replacement fee. The issue we're concerned about is utility-scale solar coming in, cutting down farmlands, taking away agricultural lands because they can afford to do it and they can afford to pay the disincentive fees. The resource replacement fee as described here on page 25 seems to me just a little vague. I'm wondering if I could hear from the planning board a little bit, your, some comments about the tools you feel we have as a community to um, provide a appropriate disincentives to utility scale uh, solar generators coming in, cutting down farmlands, taking away agricultural, uh, and basically we, we encourage renewable energy, but we want to see it sited on disturbed soils and away from, you know, prime lands, which may be the easiest places to build these kinds of facilities, but not the best for the communities in which they're located. Thank you. So the question comes to the nature of the remediation and resource replacement and it's a pro how to determine an appropriate level for Article 36. Hi, I'm Nicholas Jones, a planning board member. Um, I, I don't really want to address all of your issues right now. I think the main point is previously our solar bylaw didn't include any kind of resource replacement fee and we're trying to address that kind of issue by adding this in. So. We'd be happy to have a longer discussion at a planning board meeting about what else we could do, but this is the first step that we thought in that direction. I thank you for the questions and clarification. There's an additional question in the back. Hi, my question is, has, has there been any um, life cycle economic analysis of the value of converting uh, or using X amount of acres for solar generation versus X amount of acres for farmland production. It seems like both, both sources of production are going to the owners of the land, correct? And so um, I'd just be interested to know why uh, utility size solar uh, has to jump through a lot of hoops for the same acreage that farmland does not. I, I, I grant you that farmland is a well-established land use and utility size solar is a new land use, but I'm just curious if there's been any sort of uh, economic analysis of, of this uh, trade-off, and uh, so that's my question. Is there anyone who can speak to the question? I'm the only economist on the planning board, and um, I've never seen anything like that. I think it's quite true that Waitley has a very unique situation in that so much of our so much of our area is prime farmland or forest land. So, and I also know that the state incentives are increasingly designed to push people places away from that, but the specific kind of analysis you're asking about, 
I would love to see. You're probably in a better position to find it than we are. All right. Uh, are there any further questions specific to this bylaw? Yes. Oh, I saw, I'll recognize the um, member. After you, Ben, I'll recognize the select board member. I'm also wondering if the planning board took into consideration, there, there are many towns across the state that has have used decommissioning costs as sort of poison pills for solar installation in general. Um, the decommissioning costs have been, that have been rendered uh, are, are seen as just not economically viable and they just push anyone who wants to um, place solar on, on land, they have to go away because there's no way they can afford those those decommissioning costs because they are excessively high. So I'm just wondering if there's been thought about preserving the need for increased solar uh, against the cost or the, the realistic cost of, of those decommissioning plans. And then my second question would be, how is the planning board defining prime agricultural land? Because I've talked with many people across town with absolutely 180 degree differences of opinion about what um, the soil is like on some of the some of the spots that we already have uh, have solar on. So I'm just wondering if what what's the what's the what's the metric going to be for what's considered pr prime soil? So that's it's a two part question, and I apologize, but the moderator wishes to remind us that. Our questions need to be germane to the language in the article. And, and, and so I think it is. This, and so we would like to, s the second part of your question had to do again with, with how farmland is uh, defined. Maps, the USDA maps and defines prime science farmland so you can look at a map and see what's defined as prime farmland in Whaley or any place else okay and, uh, additionally we've we've designated uh, the location of, of prime farmland or so soils of statewide importance which are both like delineated on maps okay thank you any additional questions yes ma'am I'm sorry you were supposed to go first but. <laughs> okay um, Becky Jones, I just wanted to thank the planning board for working on this because I know it's been really hard, so thank you. All right. Thank you for the appreciation of that work. This is a difficult topic. Uh, and I'm wondering if there's no further questions or discussion. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm pleased to see that we're getting into more specifics and more details of the zoning bylaw on solar farms. Uh, as many of you know, they're all on Christian Lane in Waitley. Do we want to see that kind of development in other places in town? And I, I think it's important to to re realize that there is uh, there's a benefit to solar as well as keeping the town rural and agricultural. Uh, and I, I hate to discourage competition, but I think we, we need to focus on keeping the town the way it is and not sacrificing for these other companies to come in and put in solar because it's cheap land and they can do it. I'm, I'm glad to see that the, the planning board has, has tried to address that with more stringent uh, requirements and regulations in here. So I hope you have success in dealing with future companies in town. All right. The moderator always thanks and appreciates the opinions of the select board, but reminds us that we'd like to have our discussion focus on whether the article as written seems appropriate as a for adoption by the town. And so are there any further questions regarding the wording of this article and the proposed improvements or changes to the solar bylaw that stands now for work going forward? All right, seeing none, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of the article as amended. Article 36 of the revised solar bylaws, raise your card. All those opposed, the article carries. Mr. Moderator, this is the last article, everybody. I move that the town vote to amend the town's zoning bylaws, section 171-37, 
terms defined as follows. And it's basically the addition of uh, a definition for the source replacement, resource replacement fee that you can read underlined and it adds the subscript AC to the kilowatt designation to be distinguished from a DC kilowatt designation. The article has been moved and second article 37. Is there any discussion? Basic physics queries? No? Okay. Uh, hearing none, uh, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 37, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 37 passes. Entertain a motion for the meeting to dissolve. All those in favor? Opposed? The, article, the annual town meeting has been dissolved. Thank you for your participation.